Hey all, Tony Bing here, hello and welcome back to another video from Marvel Strike Force. Now, today I have Captain Marvel unlocked. It's took me a while to actually unlock her, considering i done a video talking about the most optimum way to actually unlock her in the quickest possible time. But truth being told, I'm pretty burnt out with the game. You probably noticed that from the, the lack of videos in the last week. But I've got it unlocked. So today we'll have the initial ranking up of her and we'll show off some gameplay just so you can see her animations if you don't have it unlocked yourself. And then once we've done that later on, we'll do some tier 8 blitz. And then following on from that, I'll look to do a tier 8 community blitz video. And then finally, we'll have the in-depth review in the next few days but for the purpose of today let's go in and get her ranked up and have a quick look at our kit. So I managed to save up 3.7 million gold here now I don't really want to spend a lot more than the 1.8 million per day that gives you the five shards for her if I was to use the majority of this gold in one day then I'm essentially losing out in some shards and I'm not sure how you farm her afterwards so I'll only take her up so high I do have three red stars on her we got lucky in that respect there we go there and then what we'll do is we'll level her up first I reckon I'll go to around about level 60 that's 1.2 million in fact one more 1.3 we'll go for that and then here we go stats are starting of course they're starting to crawl up when we go from 1 to 60 but you can see the health's looking pretty decent already now from here before I can upgrade the skills I need to upgrade the tiers and this bit as you all know takes an age so let's quickly skip past this so there we go, we managed to get it up to tier 9, I'm just unfortunately some advanced basic catalyst short of getting her to tier 10 there. So let's go in and upgrade our skills now. We've got up to level 6 on the active and 4 on the passive because I have a ton of the materials. You can see I've got 27,000 in the blue there. Purples I've got 1,000 as well and we've got the block party event coming up soon. So at level 6, let's see this one here, you can get an additional 40% damage at 7 but at level 6, Attack the primary target for 280% damage, 50% chance to chain for an additional 180 and then you've got the whole binary system coming into play where if you're not in binary you gain the charge up to a maximum of 5 and if in binary then you start to lose the charge whenever you use a skill which will be every turn because of course you're forced to use it and on losing all charged you end binary and then finally counter attack breaks the chain as well. So overall you'll be doing, let's see, at level 7, 300 and 20% damage on it which is really pretty decent for a basic especially when you look at our stats as well and we will do that once we've covered the skills we'll have a quick look at the stats before the gameplay next up anyway we've got the special so let's go in and upgrade this it is let's see it's five turns to upgrade or five turns even to use we've got up to level six again and this one, an additional 90% damage from level 6 to 7, which is pretty huge. That's probably worth your orange materials there. So at the moment anyway, at level 6, attack primary target for 360 damage, which would be 450, which is pretty incredible at level 7. You clear all positive effects, which is great. And again, you've got the same binary mechanic there. Clearing all positive effects is really good. I wonder how she'll actually go on against the likes of Juggernaut. I reckon his resistance will still probably be too high even with her high focus to clear everything from him. Interesting to test it out anyway. Now let's go for the ultimate which is binary. This one really can hit like a truck. Got up to level 6 again. The level 7 upgrade again is one you probably want to take up to tier 4. A whopping 100% extra damage which is just amazing. So with this one here, 6 turns, you cast it and you gain binary. You want to have more charges before you actually cast it to make the most of it but with this you clear all negative effects from self that'll be really useful if you're going up against the likes of brotherhood mags will blind you and then you can fire this off shake off the blind and then you can take out a target hopefully and your attack primary target for 540 damage so 640 at level 70 the attack cannot be dodged which is really good because the number of times you have a hard ultimate the likes of Iron Fist Ultimate and you use it against Spidey or Electra, you're guaranteed they will dodge it. So it can't be dodged, cannot crit, which is interesting to see there. Maybe it would be a bit too OP if it could crit. So we'll go for the passive lastly anyway. So higher, further, faster. The tooltip in this passive is absolutely ridiculous and there's no 
way I'm going to fit it into an in-depth review at all, I've got no idea how it's going to work, so let's quickly read through it anyway. So, while in binary form you gain 25% damage, 25% armor, 100% focus, 100% resistance, which is pretty amazing, and while in binary on end of turn attack all enemies for 120% damage. On spawn, you clear all charge, so this is relevant to the likes of raids or dark dimensions where charges persist. If any charge were cleared, you gain regen, so in a raid you'll gain regen at the start of the actual node. You gain one charged, if at least one ally is military, you gain an additional charge, so that's the likes of Cap, War Machine, Winter Soldier. Military allies gain additional health and damage, and then if not in binary, when the character gains ability energy, you gain one charge. So you feed her with the likes of Star-Lord. I think Thanos doesn't actually work, I need to test that, but from what I've read, Thanos providing with energy won't work because that would be a passive proc and a passive. Disappointing if it's the case, it would be really pretty strong if it did work, but I still think it's quite disappointing if it doesn't. And then finally, uh, on turn you heal self for 10% of max health, it's not clear if that's tied in with binary, so I'll need to check that. If you were to take it up to level 5, you've got the additional 30% damage to all enemies, and then you've got the 10% healing as well, so that'll be 20% max health per turn. Now, if we quickly look at the stats before we actually go in and show off some gameplay here, so I've broken this down already, her health will come out in A rating, so that'll work really nice with 20% gain on her passive again, it's just down to whether or not it kicks in in normal mode or if you're in binary. Damage would be a B, armor would be a B as well, so the fact she has a, a blaster class or brawler class and she's got high armor and also high health and regen it's going to really help her out from a survivability perspective she'll probably be the most robust brawler class out there you've got her focus and resistance that are both exceptionally high focus is a resistance i think comes in at a b and then you've got a speed which is the third fastest character in the game passives aside so that would mean that let's see it's 127 so that means that of course would be an, an a plus plus rating essentially so that's her stats so she certainly does look incredibly interesting before i really give any thoughts on her rating and to play around with her a fair bit because i've only got to use her in the minerva campaign so far and that wasn't enough so i'll play around with her a bit and i'll do some t-rate blitz following on from this video but for the end of this video here i'm just going to show off some gameplay so enjoy this and thanks for tuning in and i'll see you all again soon